The first full weekend of the college football season comes to a close tonight with Pittsburgh making its debut in the ACC by hosting Florida State. I'm sure everybody in North Carolina, South Carolina is sitting there just sweating it out, itching with anticipation, waiting to see the Pitt Panthers make their ACC debut, at the same time wondering, how the hell do we have a team from Western Pennsylvania in the Atlantic Coast Conference? Hey, the same way you got a team from Boston College in the ACC. It's not my fault. It's your conference commissioner's fault. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here. This, of course, is going to be your Labor Day Monday report. I hope you've had a enjoyable weekend with family and friends and a profitable one as well. If you found some of the handicappers here since Saturday, you certainly have made some nice money. One of them was Brian Rosica, who I mentioned in Saturday's video report, but I also happened to forget to tell so many of you the deal behind Brian Rosica. And I say that because, listen, the fact is that right after the Super Bowl, about 25% of you just go into winter hibernation and you stop playing. If you had a pizza, 100% of that pizza representing the gambling public here at the sites, 100% of you are playing college and NFL action. But once the Super Bowl goes over, and after all those lousy commercials are done playing, and after two weeks of hype, it's all over with hopefully a game that lives up to at least half of that hype, after the game is done, the fact is, about 25 to 30% of you just retire. You take a winter hibernation, a, a summer sojourn, you just disappear. Now, the rest of you, about 70, 75% of you will stay through March Madness. Then the numbers get down to about 30, 35% in the NBA. And then really only about 10 to 15% of that pie, once again, representing the gambling public, you stay for the dog days of summer for baseball. Well, the fact is the handicappers keep going. So many of them won money in the NBA playoffs and March Madness. And baseball has been tremendously successful. But the point of this is that so many of you stop watching the video reports after the Super Bowl. Shame on you. You miss seeing me every single day. I, it, it hurts, guys. It really does hurt. But here's the deal. Brian Rosica joined this site after the Super Bowl, back on February 5th. Brian Rosica is a guy I met through Anthony Red. He, a young guy, obviously, as you can tell. He is a guy who had just returned to Las Vegas about a year ago after spending a year as a line maker at one of the biggest offshore sports books in the world that's based in Costa Rica like so many of the other ones in the world are based in Costa Rica as well. He did that for a little over a year, decided that wasn't his bag, came to back to Vegas. Um, I met him through Anthony Wren and I thought it would be really neat to have somebody with a different type of perspective, a guy that actually set the line giving you the plays here on the site. Well, you know, his debut was just simply phenomenal. I think he won his four, first 14 plays, 18 of his first 19 releases. And the fact is, since joining the site in all sports since February 5th, well, he's 68 and 43, making a $10 better, $11,715. And today, he has his 59 football winner number four in a row, your Florida State-Pittsburgh side. It goes at 8 o'clock Eastern time this evening, just as strong as his Saturday winner with Alabama laying 21 and a half by 25 of Virginia Tech, just as strong as his 59 NFL preseason winner two Saturdays ago when he had the San Diego Chargers as a four-point road dog and a 21-7 easy road win at Arizona. So... Uh, and matter of fact, I'm just thinking back here. Uh, it was uh, three Sundays ago when he had his first 59 uh, football winner, when he had the Indianapolis Colts, a two-and-a-half point road favorite, winning outright at the New York Giants 20-12 to with ease. So that's what he has going today for him. Uh, Brad Wilton, guys, geez, what more can I say about this guy? He's going for winning day number 37 out of 56 and 10 out of 14 with 40-dime ACC dead mortar lock. Florida State and Pittsburgh just hit a 40-dime SEC dead mortar lock with Old Miss uh, stopping Vanderbilt on Thursday. Just hit a $5 play of the day release yesterday with the Cardinals and Pirates going over the total. And um, today, 40-dime winner. And $10 bettors following Brad Wilson's betting advice over the past 55 days, almost a two-month period, of $9,055. Listen, guys, if you want to save money on a long-term commitment to Brad Wilson, you can save $100 off the purchase price of his 30-day package simply by using coupon code BRAD100. BRAD100. A couple of other handicappers here of note. Jeff Benton, who just won his 100 dime. Game of the Year selection on Saturday with Northwestern getting the win and cover at California today. 75-dime winner number 12 
out of 15. 12 out of 15 is AL total of the year on the Tigers and the Red Sox. He is on a 10-3 and 1 roll with 75 dime selections and 12 of those 15 you've got in his $5 play of the day releases. Another one you got for $14. This play is just as big as all of them. And this one is also heavily discounted as well. You can save $66 on the purchase price of this play today by using coupon code JEFF66. JEFF66. Perhaps you'd like to make your own personal discount today, guys. Well, you can save $22 off the purchase of any handicapper here at the site by using coupon code 22SAVE. 22SAVE. Another hot guy. Props going out to Trace Adams, $1 betters, up a little over $21,000 over the past two months. Uh, today, raise the bar, 1,500 star winner number 15 of 21 on the Pirates Milwaukee game. Normally, a 1,000 star play is his top rated selection. This one is even bigger, and he's also won 17 of the last 27 days, 40 of the last 62, and again, dollar betters up a little over 21 grand. And finally, the $5 play of the day selection, turning to Scott Delaney. Uh, Delaney has 49 winner number 18 out of 22 going tonight on your Pittsburgh, Florida State over under. It's only $5. And keep in mind, you've got in 14 of his last 18 baseball 40 dimers as $5 play of the day releases. You can get today's by using coupon code SCOTT5. SCOTT5. That's S. C-O-T-T -T and the number five. And uh, keep in mind, he just won his college total the year on Friday with uh, SMU and Texas Tech going over the total. And you got that winner free as the charity play of the week. And if you haven't made a donation yet, please do so. You can read the story by scrolling down here underneath the video report. It's a sad story. If you click on the first link, you're going to see a smiling little boy, five years old. You're going to see his picture in his obituary as he passed away earlier this month as a, after a tragic home accident in which a mantelpiece fell on him, head trauma was the result, and death was the final result. The family, if you click on the second link down below my video report, the family didn't have insurance on their son. Few people have, I believe, insurance on their young children. Consequently, they are struggling to make ends meet to pay the funeral expenses, which as of a week ago, still another four grand in arrears. Um, help these people out. You participated in charity play of the week program. Uh, it's quid pro quo. I've given over uh, 2.8 million dollars worth of action over the past uh, 18 months. And if you've gotten any of it, thank you. Thankfully, you've participated and made a contribution. If you haven't, I don't know what the hell your damn problem is. But the fact is, that's what community, uh, creating a community of caregivers is all about. Uh, helping others in times of need. And you've benefited from these winners. Let's face it, you certainly have. If you're not contributing, I don't know how you look yourself in the mirror every single day. Let's get to the free pick here today. And I'll talk about your uh, um, Pittsburgh and Florida State game here in just a moment, which is really a hard game. i got to be honest with you, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Your free play, however, I'm going to go with the Red Sox at home. They're about 125 to 130 favorite over the Detroit Tigers. You know, John Lackey is 5-2 and two with a 2.24 earn run average and 10 Fenway Park starts this season. Now, he's only 1-5 and five and 8 starts since the All-Star break, but that's largely been because the Red Sox have been held scoreless in four of those eight starts. Uh, he's pitched, though, so consistently well. 14 straight starts he's pitched into the seventh inning uh, coming into this one. In fact, one of them was a seven-inning, two-run performance at Detroit on June 20th, um, in which it was a loss. Now, Doug Fister is going for the Tigers. Fister has made me a lot of money over the past couple of years since he was acquired from the Seattle Mariners. Uh, but he's lost his last two starts against the Red Sox, giving up uh, six runs and 11 hits in each of those two starts, which totaled only eight in the third innings, and he was rocked for a season high seven runs and 13 hits in Wednesday's loss to the Oakland A's. Uh, the Red Sox are five and one on their current homestand. If you're a three game sweep, they completed yesterday of the White Sox. Um, they've scored seven runs in each of their last two victories against Chicago. Uh, the Tigers coming off a 4 nothing loss yesterday at uh, Cleveland. Trust me, I know. I had the Tigers on the run line as a dog with Verlander on the hill. Guy hits a grand slam in the fourth inning. I lose 4 nothing. Go figure. Um, they had won their previous three games. One thing I did not count on yesterday, Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera was supposed to play yesterday, was scratched once again. So he's missed two straight games and parts of a third. He is day-to-day -day with this abdominal strain. 
Uh, Tigers have won 19 of their last 27 on the road, right? Since early July. But here's the thing. They are 9 and 30. They've lost 30 of 39 games at Fenway, uh, dating back to the 2003 season, and 11 of the last 12 series at Fenway as well. So I'm going to go with the Red Sox in that game. Now let's talk about Pittsburgh and Florida State. These two teams are not the same two teams you remember from a year ago. Listen, Pittsburgh, six and seven a year ago, had a lot of defle deflection, deflections defections from their team here over the summer. In fact, um, two players were suspended for the season. Ten other players either left on their own accord or were shown the door by the pit coaching staff. Uh, they've got a new quarterback, uh, Tino Sinceri, who is no longer around, which is probably a good thing. Uh, they're going with uh, Savage. I'm trying to remember his first name. Um, Tom Savage, who you may recall as a freshman a few years back, uh, started for Rutgers. Uh, then lost his starting job the following year as a sophomore, decided to transfer to Arizona. Then Rich Rod came in. Then he decided, well, Arizona wasn't the place for him, sat out, transferred to Pittsburgh. So for the first time in nearly three years, he's actually going to take a snap in a college football game. This guy was a highly rated recruit coming out of high school. Um, nine starters back for Pittsburgh defensively for a unit that finished 17th in the country a year ago in terms of total D. The one problem they had, however, was they struggled at stopping the run. Uh, giving up about 136 yards a game. And four times they allowed uh, teams to run for over 200 yards in their 13 outings last season. Not too good when you do the math, right? As for Florida State, of course, they uh, finished a strong season by beating up Northern Illinois in the Orange Bowl, the defending ACC champs, while E.J. Manuel, nowhere to be found. Uh, most of the defense for this team, nowhere to be found. You know, Florida State is opening the road opening the season on the road for the first time since 2007. Now, last year, the offense was extremely efficient, one of the top 10 in the country in terms of red zone efficiency, converting 92% of their red zone opportunities into scoring. But again, now they've got a redshirt freshman, although a five-star recruit rated by rivals. I mean, this guy is highly talented, but nonetheless, it's a redshirt freshman making his debut and it happens to be on the road. And Florida State fans have to be wondering, well, why the hell aren't we playing Wolford? who Baylor just beat by 66 points. What the hell are we doing at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh on Labor Day with a defense that has nine new starters, a redshirt freshman quarterback playing a Pittsburgh Panthers team that came from the much more physical Big East making the debut in the ACC? Hey, don't blame me. I'm just throwing out the question here, guys. Somebody's got to ask the, uh, the athletic director for Florida State because where is the cupcake that FSU should be opening up against? Again, I think this is a real difficult spot. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, 11, 10, 11 points. I don't know if Florida State, I mean, with all the talent they have, yes, they could put points on the board, but this Pittsburgh team does have nine starters back on that defensive unit that was so efficient a year ago. I think it's an interesting game to watch. I can't even venture an opinion on it, but hey, I'd researched the game extensively, as you see. I decided to at least give you the notes. Oh, one other thing. Both of Pittsburgh's top two running backs have been banged up. They should see action tonight. But let's face it, Savage is going to need some ground support as well. So, again, tough game. The free pick, official free pick, is going to be, as I said, the Boston Red Sox. Best of luck to you all, guys, and I will catch you again on Tuesday when we do this one more time.